In the last couple of lectures, we were deriving the equations for unidirectional transport. That is when transport is only in one direction and the variation in the fields, the concentration, temperature or velocity fields is only in one direction. Uh, we had done uh, derived the equations starting with a balance condition. Okay. That balance condition was that the change in mass for mass transport in a differential volume is mass in minus mass out plus the production in that differential volume. Okay. And we had written expressions for the change in mass, mass in and mass out at surfaces at z and z plus delta z due to the fluxes. Okay. So, the mass in is flux times area times time mass out is also the flux times area times time, uh, times delta t at z plus delta z. Okay. Substituted that into the equations and the production is rate of production of mass per unit volume per unit time. So, therefore, the production term is multiplied by volume and time. So, that is the balance equation divide by volume divide by time to get the difference equation and then take the limit as delta t and delta z go to 0 to get the partial differential equation. This is first order equation for time for the concentration, first order for the flux in space. Substitute fixed law for diffusion. Okay. Substitute fixed law for diffusion where d is the diffusion coefficient and you get this conservation equation in terms of the diffusion coefficient. And if the diffusivity is a constant, you can take it out of the derivative. Okay. So, that is the way you get the conservation equations. Similarly, for heat transfer, here we wrote a, 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 an equation for the enthalpy density okay, as a function of the, the, the energy in and energy out is due to the fluxes at the surfaces z and z plus delta z. And then there was a production of energy that is the rate of energy production per unit volume per unit time. Okay. And these two combined will give, give us the energy balance equation. For constant specific heat and density, this has exactly the same form as the mass conservation equation. Okay. This has exactly the same form as the mass conservation equation. If you substitute the thermal diffusivity for the mass diffusivity, the temperature for the concentration and the thermal uh, energy production for the uh, production of uh, mass. Okay. The starting point for momentum conservation was slightly different. Okay. The starting point for momentum conservation was slightly different. The equation was that the rate of change of momentum is equal to momentum in minus momentum out plus sum of forces. Okay, Newton's law. Okay. Note that momentum is a vector. In this particular case, we are considering the variation of the x momentum in the z direction. What that means is that the velocity is in the x direction. The, therefore, the momentum density rho v x is in the x direction. Variation of v x is in the z direction. So, this is a unidirectional flow. The flow is in the x direction the variation of the velocity is in the z direction. For a differential volume, there is momentum in and out because there is momentum being convected on the left and the right faces. However, if the velocity is independent of the x direction, it depends only on the z direction that momentum in and out are exactly equal. Similarly, there are pressure forces on the left face and the right face. Our analysis here is restricted to uh, zero, uh, is restricted to constant pressure in the x direction. That is, there is no variation in the pressure in the x direction. In this case, there is no net force due to the pressure as well. The only force that arises in this case is due to the shear stress. Okay. Note that the shear stress tau x z is the force per unit area in the x direction acting at a surface whose outward unit normal is in the z direction. At the top surface, outward unit normal is in the plus z direction. Therefore, the 
force per unit area in the x direction is tau xz. At the bottom surface the outward unit normal is in the minus z direction therefore tau xz is the force per unit area in the minus x direction just uh, following from Newton's third law that forces on either side have to be equal and opposite. Okay. So the momentum conservation condition contained two terms okay. one is due to the surface forces and the second is due to the body force. Body force is a force which is proportional to the volume okay. so it is proportional to delta v in the limit as delta v goes to 0. So this is the sum of the body forces okay and the first term was the sum of the surface forces. So we added up all these contributions once again this is the momentum balance only in the x direction. You can also do momentum balance in the y and z directions in this particular case since the velocity is 0 in both of those directions the velocity is non-zero only in the x direction you will get a net 0 balance for those two cases okay. So the only non-trivial um, balance in this particular case is in the x direction. So based on this we had got the conservation equation okay. Note that whereas we had on the right side minus partial jz so in this balance equation whereas on the right side we had minus partial jz by partial z and minus partial qz by partial z in the mass and energy balance equation in this case we have plus because of the convention you have used okay. However the constitutive relation also contains a plus sign okay jz and qz were equal to minus d and minus alpha okay partial c by partial z and partial t by partial z whereas the shear stress as I explained to you because it is the uh, force acting at the surface with outward unit normal in the z direction in the z direction this has a plus sign. As a consequence the sign in the equation expressed in terms of the temp uh, velocity alone is exactly the same as we had in this in, in, ma in mass and energy transfer okay. So therefore you can see that the final equation has the same sign for the partial derivatives with respect to position and the partial derivatives with respect to time as the original as, as that for mass and energy conservation equation and constant diffusivity once again you get the same sign okay, uh, in both cases okay. So therefore there is a one to one analogy between mass momentum mass and energy transfer and momentum transfer when there is no pressure variation in the x direction as I said earlier the situation changes if there is a pressure variation okay. So when there is no pressure variation all equations have the same form if concentration velocity and temperature can be written as a field variable okay phi fv all equations are of the form partial of phi fv by partial t. plus s where jz is the generalized flux okay. okay mass flux heat flux negative of momentum flux okay because we define the momentum flux to be the opposite jz is in general equal to a diffusion coefficient times partial phi field variable by partial z okay and therefore the general form is partial phi field variable by partial t is equal to partial by partial z of d plus s and where the special case where the diffusion coefficient is a constant the equation reduces to partial phi field variable by partial t plus s. So those are the general form of the equation for both mass momentum and energy. So let us see how to apply these okay in specific cases. The first thing you can choose is for steady solutions
and no sources. For a steady solution, the time derivative is 0, for no sources, the spatial derivatives are 0, okay. and therefore the equation reduces to partial by partial z of d partial t by partial z is equal to 0. Okay, that is the general form of the solution in this case. If in addition the constant the diffusivity is a constant. the equation just reduces to a second order equation partial square t by partial z square. is equal to 0. Okay. So therefore the second derivative is equal to 0 that means that the temperature t has the general form constant into z plus some second constant. Okay. It is a linear variation. Okay. Constant thermal diffusivity or constant conductivity and uh, no sources at steady state. So if you consider the simplest case where we have two surfaces okay, separated by distance h, T is equal to T naught, T equals T h okay, at these two locations. Okay. And if we take z as the coordinate perpendicular to the surface, the solution for the temperature is going to be equal to T naught plus T h minus T naught z by h. Okay. So this surface is z is equal to 0, this is at z equals h. So this is the general solution. Um, you can easily verify that T is equal to T naught at the bottom surface, Z is equal to 0. At the top surface, Z is equal to H, T is equal to TH. So this is a linear temperature profile, okay, varying between the two temperatures T naught and TH. Okay. The heat flux QZ is equal to minus K delta T by delta Z. Okay. Okay. That heat flux is a constant okay. and therefore the total heat transfer rate, okay, the total heat transfer rate, heat transferred per unit time is going to be equal to the area of cross section times the flux is equal to minus k a into t h minus t naught. Okay, so that is the simplest case you can consider the solution for the heat flux. Okay. Now what happens if you have two slabs with different thermal conductivities? Okay. I forgot to mention here that uh, the thermal conductivity here equal to k. Okay. In this particular case we assume that the thermal conductivity is equal to k. Okay. Now what happens if we have two slabs? Okay. Of different heights H1, H2 with thermal conductivity K1 and K2. Okay. How do we find out the temperature profiles and therefore the heat flux and the total heat transfer rate? If I apply a temperature at the bottom T0 and temperature at the top TH, okay. at steady state, the question is what is the heat transfer rate? Q in this combination. Okay, what is the heat transfer rate Q uh, in the z direction? I'll call it as QZ in this combination, where the z coordinate is this one. Okay, this is the z coordinate. Okay. okay. 
So therefore you have H is equal to H1 plus H2. If I call this temperature in between as Tf, okay, the temperature in between the two slabs, if I call that as Tf, right, then I know that the heat flux through the first slab has got to be equal to minus Ka into Tf minus T0 by H1. Okay, that is the Qz in the first slab. Okay. In the second slab, Qz is equal to minus Ka into Th minus Tf by H2. Okay. At steady state, these have to be equal. Okay. The reason is because whatever heat has been conducted through the first slab has to be conducted through the second slab as well. If not, the temperature will change. Okay. If what is coming into the slab is different from what is going out of the slab, temperature inside the slab will change and it is no longer at steady state. Okay. So at steady state these temperatures in both the slabs have to be and the, the heat flux and the heat transfer rate in the both the slabs have to be equal. Okay. I can use this condition to find out what is Tf which is as yet not known. Okay. I should note that I should use different conductivities here because the transfer through the first slab has a conductivity that is different from the transfer through the second slab. So expand this out, I will get minus K1A Tf by H1 plus K1A T0 by H1 is equal to minus K2A Th by H2 minus K2 A T F by H2 plus the second one. Okay, if I take uh, rearrange the terms, take the first term here to the left side okay, and this term here to the right side, okay, then I will get K1 A T H sorry K2 A T H okay. plus K1 A T naught by H1 is equal to T F into K1 A by H1 plus K2 A by H2. And the area can all cancel out. Okay. And the expression I will get for Tf into K1 by H1 plus K2 by H2 is equal to K1 T0 by H1 plus K2 Th by H2. And I can divide throughout by this factor okay. and finally I will get expression is equal to uh, yeah. Using this, I can find out what is the expression for the flux. Okay. Okay. And I just substitute the expression for Tf over here and do some algebraic manipulations, and you will get minus A. Okay. into Th minus T0 by H1 by K1 plus 
H 2 by K 2. Alternatively, I can write this as T H minus T naught is equal to H 1 by K 1 plus H 2 by K 2 into 1 over A into minus Q Z. Now, you can define the heat transfer resistance. R okay, is equal to minus delta T by Q Z. Okay. R is equal to minus delta T by Q Z. Okay. Note that Q Z was equal to uh, K A delta T by H okay, for a single slab. Okay. It was equal to K A delta T by H for a single slab. Therefore, this heat transfer resistance is equal to H by K A. There should be a negative sign here. So, H uh, so R is equal to H by K A okay. that is for a single slab. For a two slabs you have two resistances. Okay. For two slabs, R1 is equal to H1 by K1A and R2 is equal to H2 by K2A. Okay. The resistance for the combination of these two slabs, okay, the resistance for the combination of these two slabs here okay, is the sum of those two resistances. Okay. So, therefore, T H minus T naught is equal to minus Q Z into R 1 plus R 2 okay. or rather uh, the sum of the resistances R 1 plus R 2 is equal to H 1 by K 1 A plus H 2 by K 2 A is equal to minus Q Z minus okay. So, if you have one slab you can express the temperature difference in terms of the heat flux times the resistance. If you have two slabs the temperature difference across a combination of two slabs is equal to the heat flux times the sum of resistances. This is the equivalent of a series configuration. Okay. This is equivalent of a series configuration. For two slabs it is just equal to R 1 plus R 2. Okay. And you can easily extend this to a series of a large number of slabs. Okay. So, if I have 1 etcetera n okay, and I have T is equal to T H on top and T is equal to T naught. Then just from this series configuration the total resistance has to be the sum of the resistances. Okay. So, R 1 plus R 2 plus etcetera plus R n okay, which is basically H 1 by K 1 A plus H 2 by K 2 A plus etcetera plus H n by K n A is equal to minus delta T by Q z. Okay. So, in a sense this delta T is like a voltage difference, Q z is like a current. Okay. The ratio of the voltage difference that minus sign because the heat flux is in the direction of decreasing temperature it goes in the from higher temperature to lower temperature that is why you have a negative sign. Therefore, minus delta T by Q z is the sum of resistances 
if it is in this series configuration. Okay. Note that in the series configuration the uh, voltage difference is the sum of the differences across the two resistors. The current in both the resistors is exactly the same. Therefore, the heat transfer rate in these two slabs which is the analog of the current is the same. The temperature difference which is the analog of the voltage difference is the sum of the temperature differences across the two slabs in this uh, series configuration. Okay. So, you can think of this exactly as electrical resistances in series each resistance the resistance of each of these is H by K A where H is the thickness K is the conductivity and A is the area. Okay. And if you have a series of slabs you have to just add up the resistance to each of those slabs. The sum of the resistance is equal to minus delta T by the total heat transfer rate where delta T is the temperature difference across the entire slab. So, in this particular case where you have slabs one on top of the other the current through each that is the heat transfer rate through all of them has to be the same at steady state. Okay. Uh, if you do not have the heat transfer rate the same on both sides of the slab then the temperature has to increase inside because the energy is increasing. At steady state all heat transfer rates are exactly the same therefore, the, the whereas the temperature differences add up to give you the temperature difference across the entire. Okay slab that is made of all of these other materials and the resistances have to be added up. Okay. So, that is the series configuration for heat transfer at steady state. The equivalent of a parallel resistance is the parallel configuration. Okay. In this case you have different materials of the same height h. However, the, the thermal conductivity and the area of each is different. And you are imposing temperature difference T naught and T H. In this case since the temperature difference is the same that means that the temperature profile okay, as a function of Z okay, will be exactly the same in each of those. The temperature profile as a function of Z will be exactly the same in each of these. Okay. It will be equal to T naught T naught here and it will be equal to T H here. Okay. The temperature profile will exactly be the same. The fluxes are added up. Okay. So, the currents are basically added up. Okay. Uh, so, the fluxes are added up in this parallel configuration. So, therefore, I will have Qz is equal to Qz1 plus Qz2 plus etcetera plus Qzn. Okay, the fluxes are added up and this is equal to minus K1 A1 by H. Okay. Since the temperature difference is delta T is the same for all slabs this is equal to Th and T0. Okay, the temperature on both sides are the same that means the temperature difference across each slab is the same. So, you get minus K1 A plus okay. and this based upon our definition of heat transfer resistance, heat transfer resistance is H by K A. So, this is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus etcetera. which is the sum of this equal to minus 1 by R total. Okay. So, for this parallel configuration where the temperature difference or the voltage difference is the same across each slab the total heat flux heat transfer rate or the current is the sum of the currents in all the slabs okay, as shown here. For this particular case I get 1 over R total is equal to 1 by R1. So, for this parallel configuration you have the inverse sum rule for the resistances. Resistance total resistance inverse is equal to the sum of the inverse of each of those resistances just as it, as it is for an electrical circuit. 
that is when the slabs are all placed side by side so that the temperature difference is the same, the heat transfer rate is different in each slab. In contrast, for this series configuration where the temperature difference across each slab is different but the heat transfer rate is the same, the resistances add up according to the sum rule. Okay, the resistances add up according to the sum rule. So this is a discussion for steady state, constant diffusivity, no sources. Okay. Next lecture onwards we will discuss what happens when you do have sources still at steady state okay, in unidirectional transport. So I will continue this in the next lecture, I will see you then.